Well, first off, I will say congratulations. After 10 years of being an artist, you now have your debut album, and it's gorgeous. <laughs> right, yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate that. Um, I'm sure that's not lost on you how interesting that really sounds, having been an artist for as long as you know. But what's the, what's the story not there? Not at all. I'm, I'm sure you've been asked this, too. What's the story there? I think it was just a matter that I'd just been playing you know, music since I was about 10 years old and had kind of a lot of bands and then finally had you know, cigarettes. But that band just had such a long transformation. It started off sounding nothing like it sounds now. It sounded like a... It was really inspired by like Erasure and New Order and kind of like 80s Madonna singles. And then, like, you know, then it kind of got much darker as time went on. I got into a lot of, a lot of drum music and things like that. Yeah. So I think it was just the sound wasn't quite there. It just took quite a while for everything to, uh, you know, perform the way it needed to. It was, it was a longer period. Yeah. I was also in my hometown, El Paso, which things move a lot slower there, I think. So that was kind of part of it. When did you start to understand what this sound was becoming, uh, or maybe even what you needed to be? Like, when was that transformation period where it finally settled? I think there was a. I had been kind of messing around with stuff forever and trying on different sounds, but I think somehow I had some really uh, a really rough time. I had a breakup, and I saw a friend pass away pretty tragically around the same time in early 2012. And at the same time, I discovered, or I would say, kind of went really deep into like some early 60s music that was really helpful like the Terra Sisters and um, and also got into Mazzy Star Red House Painters and stuff like that and I think that all kind of happened at once and it helped me kind of form some sort of identity that was um, closer to myself than the stuff I was doing before mm -hmm. so I think it was just kind of a matter of chance of all those things happening at once also the Cowboy Junkies um, Trinity Session that record um, philosophically was a big deal so that, it was like almost kind of like lightning struck at that moment, and my life was changed, and also all the, the music that I used for Salvation was went really deep at that moment because I was very open, you know, and it really cut really deep. So I think that's kind of, maybe has something to do with it. You and I are both, I think, uh, big soundtrack fans because from what I've read a yeah. few times, like they've been a really important part of my life and, and my musical Okay. moments and everything and when i listen to your record like i get that sense that there is a quality to it that reminds me of that and i don't know if you went for it like that to find that kind of soundtrack i don't know stream but still trying to make it sound like your own album i guess right yeah and yeah exactly uh the soundtrack thing has just been such a big thing for me i guess because you just think of that music right you think of a great soundtrack and it puts these uh maybe they can kind of be more imaginative or something they can get away with more and it kind of opens your mind a different way it, conjures images and obviously it's that music is married to images which i think is something that's powerful about it yeah. um but yeah i had the one of the records that i always had around um when i was having a rough time sleeping or something was uh this any morricone collection called uh any more any morricone with love which is just a bunch of his um romantic soundtracks from the 60s kind of uh, tracks from it i think that record was really influential on me just as far as the feeling of it it was like i said really romantic and very soothing and very beautiful and that's uh, one of the big ones for me. And even though it's a compilation, it's, you know, kind of get a yeah. sense of his soundtrack work there. And he's really eclectic anyway. So it's, I liked all his, you know, I did like all his horror soundtracks too and, and things like that. The way you explained him was exactly the way I would explain the Cigarettes After Sex record too, which is, you know, oh, really? okay. that romantic good, chill quality. But of course, it's, it's sort of balanced out by those lyrics that if you don't listen closely, you don't understand that it is very candid yeah. and you write very candidly about what's going on is there a point because i know this is mostly autobiographical too is there a point in any of the songs on here where you sort of second guessed and maybe pulled back to keep a little or or is it all out there i think it's mostly all out there because even when i started i, I kind of started cigarettes with that in mind that i was writing songs that i thought i might get in trouble for because i was talking about situations i was in that might that some people probably wouldn't want out there. <laughs> so I think I had to make some sort of step and just kind of go with that. And it felt like it was the right thing to do for my writing. And it was the most honest way I could express myself. So I think nowadays I, I just kind of, that was one lesson I kind of kept in mind. It was, you know, just kind of, if you feel like it should be there, just put it, put it out and I'll deal with any problems later. <laughs> Luckily, all the music is sweet right now. It's not, I think <laughs> back then I was writing some stuff that was kind of scathing, but now it's, uh, you know, it's uh, it's all pretty sweet, so I don't I haven't had any trouble with anybody getting offended or anything. <laughs> um, but no, I just I like to just be honest about things, and it seems like it's people seem to enjoy the honesty, and it seems like it's it's good for me as well. So it's it seems to work out. 
I mean, you can even see when artists don't put it all out there, and it's kind of a letdown. Like, especially, you know, uh, away from music, oh, yeah. like the autobiographies and stuff. You're like, man, I know you're skipping over something, and it's the stuff that we want to hear. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I think there was, yeah, the, some of the these autobiographies I read that weren't as interesting. Like, you, I was kind of reading, like, Paul McCartney's, and I'm like, oh, I didn't, just, like, really, so it was really clinical, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of talking about, you know, you want to hear more about, like Patty Smith's autobiography, like that makes more sense. Like right. that's very honest, you know. Like right. that kind of vibe. So the, you know, I, I respond to that. It sounds like you're saying the same thing for sure. You know, definitely. Well, uh, again, I, I do love this record and everything that's kind of led up to it. Um, so okay. thanks, man. I appreciate you taking the time. I'll let you get back in there uh, to whatever's going on in the oh, club. Sure. But uh, congratulations yeah, totally on drinking. ten years a debut. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, take care, Greg. All right, take it easy. Thanks.